Paul and Muhammad both taught their followers about Jesus, but only one of them met Jesus and was sent by Jesus. The other, not so much. In 1 Corinthians 9.1, Paul writes, Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Paul met the risen Jesus on the road to Damascus, where Paul was on his way to hunt down Christians and bring them to Jerusalem to face punishment. As he was riding, he saw a light that was brighter than the sun all around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the goads. Paul cried out, Who are you, Lord? And the voice replied, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Now get up and stand on your feet. I have appeared to you to appoint you as a servant and as a witness of what you have seen and will see of me. I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. An apostle is one who is sent. Paul was sent by Jesus himself, hence we call him the Apostle Paul. But Jesus warned his followers to beware of people like Muhammad. In Matthew 7, Jesus said, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. No one in history fits this description of a false prophet more perfectly than Muhammad. Muhammad came to Jews and Christians and claimed to be their friends, sheep's clothing. But when he became powerful enough, he called for their violent subjugation, ravenous wolf. Jesus said that we can recognize false prophets by their fruits. Whether we look at Muhammad's life or the impact he's had on the world, Muhammad's fruits are not good. A 2014 study by the World Economic Forum concluded that 18 of the 20 worst countries in the world in terms of the gender gap between men and women were Muslim-majority countries. There have been more than 30,000 deadly Islamic terrorist attacks just since 9-11. Concerning human rights abuses, one of the most pro-Islamic news sites on the planet, the Huffington Post, writes, of the countries with a high risk of violations, Syria, Egypt, Libya, Mali, and Guinea-Bissau, feel free to look up the religious demographics of those countries, have seen the worst deterioration of their human rights situation. Geographically speaking, nations in the Middle East and North Africa account for the vast majority of the countries in the extreme risk category. Nations in the Middle East and North Africa. Now, what could they possibly have in common? Belief in Muhammad is what they have in common. So, if we know false prophets by their fruits, as Jesus claimed, we know that Muhammad was a false prophet the same way we know that this is an orange tree. Except that we have far, far more evidence for our conclusion about Muhammad.